Today we're going to be installing a new crank pulley on my R53 Mini Cooper S. For the crank pulley install, you're going to need a few items. Obviously, you're going to need a new crank pulley, whether it's an aftermarket unit, an OEM one, and there are a few different options. We're going to discuss those a little later. I'm choosing to replace my crank bolt. You're going to need a longer version of your crank pull. So it's the same thread pitch of M12 times 1.75. This one is 100 millimeters long. The stock one is 75 millimeters long. And then you're going to need an M10 bolt that is about 4 inches long as well. And that's to press the pulley off. And this is to pull the pulley back on. Then, of course, here is your part number for the stock piece. And then here is the belt number you're going to need. If you're going with a stock size crank pulley or the 2% over, you're still going to use a stock size belt. You only need to change belt size if you're going to use a 15% upper pulley on the supercharger or a 17% or something like that. But if you're maintaining a stock size supercharger pulley, either a 2% or 1% or 0%, it's all going to be the same belt. Luckily, Mini was nice enough to make the crank pulley pretty easy to get to. If you look, all I had to do was pull the inner fender liner out. You just had to remove a few clips up here on the front, and you can tuck it back out of the way. You don't even have to completely remove it. And you have a direct shot at it right here. You're going to need a 15 millimeter socket. You can either A, put the car in sixth gear, and have someone press on the brakes while you use a ratchet that goes up into the engine bay and break it loose that way. Or you can use an impact wrench, which is what I'm going to do. It's definitely not a bad idea to spray that with some lubricant beforehand. Just let some WD-40 or PB Blast or whatever you use soak in a little bit to make it easier. Trying to take the crank pulley bolt off on my 350Z was a nightmare, so hopefully this will go a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and get the impact out. Uh, we will have to turn a light off for that because I only have one plug over here but we'll zip that off real quick and then hopefully we can get the puller on there after we take the belt off well that was a lot easier than I expected so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the belt off which we'll do from up top and then we'll get the puller out so now that we have the belt removed we're gonna use an M10 bolt that we're gonna slide in here and that's gonna give something for the puller to push against we're going to get the puller set up here on the pulley and work our way off. Making sure we go nice and slow, don't rush it. We don't want to strip the bolts on the puller and we don't want to mess up anything as the pulley's coming off. We want it to come straight off. We don't want it to lean or rock. It's going to mess up our seal and it might mess up our crankshaft. So I apologize for not filming the process of actually removing the pulley from the engine, but it was a huge pain. There was quite a bit of swearing and frustration, so I chose not to film it. I was originally trying to use a three-jawed puller, so kind of like this bad boy right here, and that was slipping off. It wasn't working, and I watched someone else's video and realized I had used a different type of puller. I hadn't noticed that my pulley on the inside of the pulley has a little threaded holes that I can use a different type of puller, so I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Please take my advice and look at your pulley and carefully analyze it before you jump in and do this process because the puller I used worked much better. So just save yourself some headache and use the one that I'm about to show you. So here's the tool that I use. It is a harmonic balancer puller kit. It has this hardened plate that can do the three different bolts or two opposing bolts depending on what your car uses and comes with a series of different size bolts and different thread pitches. For the R53 Mini on my car, I used these M6 times 1.0 thread bolts. You can see the M6 down here is pretty small, but the rest of it is a pretty beefy bolt. Use all three of them on some very small holes that are hidden inside the pulley are hard to see. I'll show you those in just a second, but this worked like a treat. Without too much effort, I had the pulley off in just a few minutes, but getting it all set up and everything was a little bit of a pain, but it was nothing compared to that three-jaw puller, which got me nowhere. So this is definitely the one I would use. Go pick this up at an auto parts store. You can buy it or you can rent it. It's up to you. This is what I use to get it off the car and it took me probably two minutes from the time I figured out this is what I was going to do. Looking at the stock crank pulley here, you can see the three threaded holes down at the bottom. The problem is they're about 35 or 40 millimeters into the pulley, so you're going to need a pretty long hardened M6 bolt to get to them, whereas the replacement pulley, you can attach it directly to the pulley and get pretty close. So you've got a pretty deep little 
section here that you're going to need to get your bolts into. Some of the R53s have a different style pulley where there's a face here that you can thread into and instead of be being deep down in there you can use a much shorter bolt. So that's something to check before you get your puller to know that you have the right hardware to get it off so you're not trapped at home once you remove your supercharger belt. And because I wasn't able to show it to you on the car by using this M10 bolt that fits inside the hole nicely I can put this in the hole, it'll sit deep into the pulley and bottom out onto the crankshaft and with that there, then the puller will press against this, which will then press against the crankshaft and pull the pulley over the bolt. Whereas if this was not there, the end of the puller itself will not fit inside this hole to go all the way down and bottom out on the crankshaft, so you're just going to compress onto the pulley and you're not actually going to move it anywhere. So get yourself a nice long M10 bolt. It'll fit down in here. This one's got a nice big head on it so that if this little ridge here will keep the end of the puller tool in place as everything gets settled out. But let's measure this real quick. Looks like it is four and a half inches long and this one worked perfectly for my setup. But the longer this is, the longer your M6 bolts are going to have to be to give room for this to slot in. So just make sure all of your setup works before you really commit to pulling this off because you don't want to get halfway through the job and then be trapped at home. So we have our stock pulley over here on the left and our Alta pulley over here on the right. Obviously the differences are going to be this one weighs about 8 pounds and this one weighs 1 pound. It is aluminum and there's a lot of sectioning here to make it as light as possible. It is a 2% overdrive pulley, which we'll get into that in just a little bit. But this one is a two-piece pulley. This right here is rubber connecting this inner and outer sleeve. And what that does is it's going to dampen the shock of changing gears, letting out your clutch, the supercharger, all of your pulleys working. It's just going to make it a little bit more of a refined experience for the driver. It's going to dampen a little bit of the vibrations that come from the engine. However, this is not and I will repeat, not for the life of the engine. This was added by BMW for purposes of luxury, not for purposes of longevity. The non-supercharged Tritec and other vehicles from other manufacturers just has a solid pulley. It is not dampened at all. It's because they do not care about luxury as much. This costs a lot more to manufacture, a lot more to replace, but for the luxury, for BMW, it's worth it. So switching to this solid pulley is not going to shorten the life of your engine as long as everything is installed properly. There's a big difference between this and something like a fluid damper, which is going to properly balance out the harmonics of your engine and is going to help longevity. It's going to help smoothness, but it's also going to cost a lot more. This I got for $100 because the box was damaged. Normally it's going to be about $150. The fluid dampers are going to cost three times as much. You're going to be in the $450 range, which for me on a car this cheap, it's just not worth it. Maybe if it was brand new. So I am definitely happy with my lightweight Alta pulley. So we're going to move this out of the way and talk about this. So number one, obviously it's lighter, so it's going to help the engine rev faster. It's going to save us a little bit on fuel. It's going to make everything in the engine just a little bit easier because it's not working to spin that heavy pulley. Number two, the 2% overdrive is going to spin the supercharger 2% faster at any given time. Now, the math on it is not perfect enough to say 2% increase in pulley is going to be 2% increase in boost, which would be 2% increase in power. It doesn't work like that, but even if we ballparked it at that, car making 170 horsepower, 2% of that, we're only looking at about three horsepower from this, so it's not a huge difference, if that. So the only reason I got this is it was the same exact price, and it should help keep my belt a little bit tighter. So keep slippage down because you've got more surface area for the belt to grab onto, and it's going to be held a little tighter because this is a bigger circle. But the main reason we're doing this is not performance. It is actually for reliability. This solid aluminum pulley is never going to fail. The engine's going to fail before this does. I'm going to spin a bearing or something is going to happen or if a transmission is going to blow up. This is pretty much foolproof. It's a nice quality aluminum piece. It's never going to fail. The stock piece, we'll bring it back over here. This rubber, which you can kind of see, is starting to separate from the edges. And when it does, there's nothing connecting the crank to this outer pulley, which means 
no alternator, no water pump, engine is completely inoperable. Of course, you also won't have the supercharger. So you cannot drive when these split and you are stranded wherever you are. So I wanna change this now before it becomes an issue. And if I'm gonna change it, I might as well upgrade while I'm there and get a little bit of extra performance for less money. So there's really no reason not to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this up a little bit. I'm gonna put it in some hot water so that as I slide this over the crankshaft, this will be expanded a little bit, slide in a little bit easier. We're gonna be using this 100 millimeter bolt, which is long enough that it can start pulling it down and get it seated before we put in the stock bolt. All right, so we've got our pulley. It just came off the boiling water. Got it seated on there. And now we'll just get it fully seated. So I actually decided to add a couple stacks of washers. For both putting it in and taking the pulley back out, you can just put a screwdriver in your brake rotor here and it'll lock up against the caliper and that'll hold it in place. You don't want to use impact tools to put this down, just your regular wrench so that if anything bad happens, it's going to happen slowly and you can feel it instead of destroying it and having to start all over. So after a little bit of tightening, we can take that other one out and we can put in our new bolt, which does have Loctite on it already, so you don't need to add any of your own. Remember this is a 15 millimeter bolt and you are going to be tightening this down to 85 foot pounds when you're done. So with the torque down we can remove our screwdriver and we'll reroute our belt making sure we leave the idler pulley here for last. And with that we are done. So we've saved ourselves quite a bit of weight. Maybe get a teeny tiny bit more boost but we shouldn't have any extra wear on either the crank or on any of the accessories. I mean the difference between 2% overdrive is the difference between 70 miles an hour and 71 and a half miles an hour for your accessories. So really not going to make any sort of significant difference. But hopefully we'll get just a teeny bit more power, a little bit more responsiveness and maybe save a tiny bit of gas. But if nothing else we will not have to worry about being stranded on the side of the road when the other pulley fails. So of course if you guys have any questions you can drop those in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.